get into the very word of God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, we're going to read in, hallelujah, Ephesians chapter number four. That's Ephesians chapter number four, verses 17 through 19. That's not where we're preaching from, but that's where we're reading from. That's Ephesians chapter number four, verses 17 through 19. We'll give everybody a second to go grab your Bible. Maybe you got it on your cell phone. That's real good. Maybe you have it on your tablet. That's real good. Maybe you have that word of God just memorized in your heart. That's excellent. So no matter where you got the word of God, go retrieve it, go fetch it, go get it right now so that we can go into the word of God. I want to thank my beautiful wife officially, Lady J, for an excellent devotion. Come on, can we give God praise for my wife officially, Lady J, for a great, great worship time. If you enjoyed the worship, type it on out. We go through every single service, and we like to see good comments. So if you got a good comment that's given to you by God, go on ahead and put it down. You don't have to put down anything that you ain't feeling, but you're just saying just to pat our back. We don't want those comments. We just want the comments of those who the Holy Spirit has given you something to give us because it's nourishment for us. We watch every single service that we put out there, whether it be Wednesday Bible study or Wednesday prayer meeting or this morning service. We watch the service. We look at the comments. We love good comments. If you got a comment that ain't that good, keep it to yourself. Hallelujah. And so now it's time to get into the word of God. Lift that Bible up wherever you're at. Repeat after me if you're able and if you can't say, this is my Bible. This is God's word unto me. All that it says I am. All that it says I am. I am. I am. All that it says I possess. All that it says I possess. I possess. I, possess. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord. For, your for your written word. I thank you, Lord. I, thank you, Lord. I didn't make up this word, up this word but I believe your word. I believe your word. For you declared, in your word you declared in your word that your word, that your word is a lamp unto my feet, unto my feet and a light unto my, and path. Light unto my path. Hide your word, Hide your word in, my heart, in my heart that I might not, I might not sin, against sin against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to read the word of God. That's again in the book of Ephesians, chapter number four, verses 17 through 19. Let's read on the count of three. One, two, three. Let us read. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all cleanness with greediness. We're going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we declare, Father God, that you are holy, O oh Father God, and you said in your word to be ye holy, for you are holy. Father, you said if we draw nigh unto you, you'll draw nigh unto us. Father, you said, O oh Father God, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so, Father, we ask, Lord, that you would be a part of this meeting, Lord, because if you're not a part of the, part of the meeting, Lord, we're not having church. But, Father God, we're asking and requesting, Father God, your presence, O oh Lord, that we might be able to go into the word, Lord, that the word might give us everything we need, Lord, that we would be fully furnished to do your work according to your will in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we ask, oh Lord, that you would protect us and keep us, oh Father, as we go through your word, that you, oh Father God, would utilize the equipment, Father God, and the airwaves, Lord, and even Facebook and YouTube, oh Father God, that the equipment would work, Lord, according to your will, Father God, in your way. And Father, I ask personally that you would bind that devil in the name of Jesus that would come and try to thwart the word from going forth that would come and try uh, to stop this work from going forth but father we decree and we father god say do you be the glory lord take control of this meeting lord and we'll forever give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory in jesus mighty name we pray amen and thank 
God. Hallelujah. Well, it's time to get into the Word of God. And uh, we read out of Ephesians, but we're also going to be back in Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Beginning with verse 9. We're going to talk from the subject again of what we started last week, which is willpower. This is willpower part two. Hallelujah. And we define willpower is willpower is the ability to constrain. Hallelujah. Those feelings. Willpower is the ability to be able to constrain. How many of you know that sometimes we have to be in a position where we constrain feelings, hallelujah, where we constrain that old flesh, hallelujah, that old man that tries to rise up in your life. And so we're going to talk about willpower. We need willpower. I don't know about you, but I know I need willpower. How often every Sunday, how often every Wednesday, no, I need willpower every day, every second of every day. I need to have willpower because without willpower, how many of you know that the enemy will have me doing all kinds of crazy things without willpower. The old man will resurrect. That's right. Even though you've been saved for many years, the old man is right there ready to be resurrected if you give him power. And you can resurrect that old man by not doing the things of God and doing the things of self. And so today we're going to talk about willpower. We're going to go through the, the couple of verses in Ephesians and then we're going to flip over to Psalm 119. This is all background. Hallelujah. The the Bible says in Ephesians, hallelujah, we know Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul. And in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 17, the Bible says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. And so he makes a differentiation between how we're supposed to walk. That word walk in the Bible oftentimes leads to the word live. So we're not supposed to live as saints of the most high God uh, like the Gentiles live. And the Gentiles meaning those who do not have a relationship with Christ, those who are not washed by the blood of Jesus, those who do not know the very oracles of God. And so he says that henceforth we're not supposed to walk as the Gentiles walk and it says henceforth why because of the relationship we have with Christ we all at one point or another walked as Gentiles I'm gonna take my time this morning uh, but we all used to walk as Gentiles, we all walked, hallelujah, not according to the word of God, but then God did something in your life when you got saved. The Bible says that we don't walk as the Gentiles walk, and how do they walk? In the vanity of their mind. And so we got to bring out this just for a couple of seconds. We're talking about the vanity of the mind. And, and so I started thinking about it, and I started looking some things up yesterday. Vanity means the emptiness of the mind. And so he's saying that the Gentiles walk according to the vanity of their mind, meaning that they walk, hallelujah, uh, with vain imaginations or emptiness. What is that talking about? Well, you got to understand your mind. And when we think of the mind, we think of the brain. But when we think figuratively, we're thinking about the mind as being the seat of, hallelujah, your understanding. And so every time the Bible talks about mind, we're talking about understanding. And how many of you know that if you don't have a relationship with God, you don't have an understanding of him? Remember, when you're not in Christ Jesus, it's like a mind, like a, a mind that has blindfolds on it, hallelujah, because of unbelief. What am I saying? And so he's saying that we should not walk according or how or way of living the way the Gentiles walk with the vanity of their mind. How many of you know that oftentimes we all had stinking thinking? We had the type of thinking that did not even consider God. And so vanity again is emptiness and mind. We're talking about understanding. And how many of you know that? The wisdom of this world, thank you, Holy Spirit, is foolishness to God. So even though we might have education, even though we might have street smarts, even though you may know how to do all types of things, if you don't know the Lord, hallelujah, how many of you know you really don't have knowledge? You really don't have wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning, hallelujah, of knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and knowledge. Now we're talking about something. And so today, that that's what we go into in this particular book. He's saying that we ought not be henceforth anymore because you're saved. We don't need to act like we used to act before. And if you see any traces of the old self coming true, if you see any traces of the old man resurrecting, that's when you got to have what willpower to constrain that spirit that you might serve the spirit of the most high God. Hallelujah. And so as we go through these verses, it says here, don't do as 
as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkening. And so again, when we talk about mind today, we're going to be talking about your understanding. And it says the understanding was darkened. And when something's dark, that means you can't really see. Hallelujah. You don't have clarity. It says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So wait a minute. There's a lot on this particular verse. It says you're alienated. Hallelujah. When you're alienated, that means that you and God are on the same level. That means you and God are on the same page. When you're alienated from God, that means that God is not next to you. God is not close to you. God is not a part of your thinking. And so he says you're alienated, but through ignorance. And so we have to understand when people do not have a sufficient relationship with Christ, they're deemed as being ignorant. Now, ignorant doesn't mean stupid. Ignorant just means that you don't have the knowledge of the things of God or you don't have knowledge of something. And so if you call somebody ignorant, hallelujah, that's the absence of having the knowledge necessary, hallelujah, to understand a thing through your mind. And so the Bible says here, because of the blindness that's of their heart, we need to talk about that for a minute because we talked about them being alienated and now it brings up the heart. And how many of you know that uh, I looked some things up and uh, the word heart is mentioned Old and New Testament and the heart never, hallelujah, according to theologians, it never references uh -huh, that vessel that's inside your body that pumps blood to give you life. Hallelujah. It never mentions that, but it always speaks of the heart figuratively, right? Not literally. If it was literal, then it would be talking about that particular organ, hallelujah, that pumps blood all through the body. But it talks about the heart figuratively. And what it means by heart is heart means your actual desire. So mind means understanding, but heart means desire. How many of you know there's a lot of activity that go in the heart because the heart is the seat of your desires. And so when you want something, that's a heart condition. And the Bible says here with regards to the heart, let's read that verse again. It says because of blindness of the heart. And so the heart, hallelujah, because they did not have a relationship with God, it says that the heart was blind, hallelujah. And when you have blind heart or blind desires, how many of you know that you're doing the things that you want to do and you're not doing the things that the most high would want you to do? Why? Because you do not have a knowledge of the most high. So if I don't have an understanding of who God is, then how can I have the desire to serve him? And if I don't have the desire to serve him, the last step I want to mention is your actions or the things we do do. So how many of you understand if I don't know God, I don't have an understanding of him in my mind. Hallelujah. Then I don't have the desire to do what he wants me to do in my heart. And so then the actions or the deeds of the body, hallelujah, will not be righteous. They will be unrighteous. Hallelujah. But we know as saints of the most high God, that as a saint of the most high God, the Bible says that we ought to yield our members unto what? Righteousness and not unrighteousness. Well, how do I yield my member unto righteousness? Let's go backwards. So if my action is the thing that I need to change, I need to be able to yield my members unto righteousness, meaning I need to be able to do what God would have me to do. My ways ought to line up now with his ways. Now, uh, I know y'all saying that, wait, our ways aren't his ways and our mind isn't his type of mind, but that's with the absence of the spirit. But when you're saved, how many of you know when you know better, you should do better? And if you got the beam of seen of Christ within you and the Holy Ghost dwells in the temple that you call your body, then our ways can be like his ways because we can yield to the spirit. Catch it. You can yield to the spirit of God. And when you yield to the spirit, you're doing righteous works. Hallelujah. Because he created us in Christ Jesus. <laughs> he was our craftsman to create us in Christ Jesus to produce good works. So now since I can produce good works, the reason I can produce the good works is because of my heart, because the desires of my heart, God will change when he lives in my heart. And because he changed the desires, he changed them because I have an understanding of God. You see how we went backwards? So it goes understanding first. You got to know who he is. Then your desires can change. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said, if you're going to come after me, do what? Let a man deny himself. Hallelujah. If you deny yourself, you're denying your will. If you're denying your will, what are you doing? You're denying your desires. You're replacing those with God's desires. And now since my desires are in line with the word of God, because I have an understanding.
understanding of who God is and what he requires. Now my ways, hallelujah, can be righteous. But to do all that, I got to have some power. And you can't do it without the power of the Holy Ghost. I know there's a whole lot and I was going real quick. But you'll understand it hopefully by and by. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says here, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness hallelujah that's evil workings and so in times past all of us were part of lasciviousness to do what to work all in cleanness with greediness we know that the love of money is the root of all evil so again we want to rehearse this and then we want to go to Psalm 119 I want to go a little slow I want everybody to understand how many of you know that this walk that you have in Christ Jesus this is all background this is all the things we're going to talk about today but how many of you know that your walk begins with your mind renewal we got to have mind renewal every single day your mind ought to be renewed in the things of Christ if we're Christians and we have Christ on the inside our mind needs to be renewed why because we need to have an understanding of God and how many of you know since God is so outstanding since God is so vast how many of you know that there's still work for everybody to do how many of you know that when you get saved you have not arrived hallelujah because it's not on your works that you get saved we get saved what hallelujah by grace we are saved through faith hallelujah not of yourselves it's a gift of God not of works least any man boast I can't boast because I didn't do anything to deserve to be saved but salvation always comes hallelujah through God's grace we don't want to frustrate his grace hallelujah but that unmerited favor that he gave us he gave us so that we might be able to serve him that's the reason he did it it's none of our works but it's all his works and it's based on the gift that's a free gift hallelujah it ain't dependent upon your address it ain't dependent on who you're married to or what family you're in it's all in God hallelujah before the foundations of the world selecting hand picking you that you might serve him and so we got to have an understanding of God this is just rehearsal and so we once we have an understanding of God let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus so the mind of Christ we ought to have that mind and we need to have an understanding of the mind remember in Matthew 13 we talked about the fact that when the sower went forth to sow seed uh -huh, some of the seed fell by the wayside and the fowler or the birds came and ate it all up and we know hallelujah that the interpretation there is when the word of God goes out church this is all foundation hang with me please but when the word goes out hallelujah eh, that word of God it's scattered but the seed that fell by the wayside is the seed that was planted where in the heart hallelujah uh -huh, in that heart but the devourer came the devil came and snatched it out when there wasn't what when there wasn't understanding so the first thing I need to do is get understanding that's why the Bible says in the book of Psalm and all thy getting get an understanding because if somebody gives you the word of God but you don't understand it the devil's gonna come in and snatch it away and so therefore hallelujah the latter continence of the man is the same as the former continence that means that nothing has changed and if nothing has changed you're not being washed by the word and if you're not being washed by the word you're still in your sin and if you're still in your sin you won't be with the maker uh, you won't be with the maker when your time on this earth is up so our job is to break down every word uh -huh, so even an infant can understand that we got to have mind renewal church we got to understand God's word because once we understand God's word then it remains in the heart and it can become fruitful some 30 fold some 60 some 100 fold y'all know the story in Matthew 13 and so I want to harvest on the word that's been deposited in my heart but the only way I get a harvest is if I understand that word so I need to understand that word with my mind it's deposited in the heart but the heart hallelujah is the place where my desires are and so if I understand the word now my desires can change from the old Tracy Wilson's desires and what I wanted to do to the desires of God and what he would have me to do and once my desires change now my actions can change through the power of the Holy Ghost because now I can yield my members unto righteousness and not unrighteousness and I can walk according to the steps mapped out by God <laughs>
Hallelujah. I know that that was, again, a reinforcement of what we already just talked about earlier. But I needed somebody to get it broken down. Uh, I hope everybody is okay. If not, give me a call on my cell phone if you don't understand it. 216-313-0726. I'm not playing around. It's important for us to understand the purpose of the mind, which is understanding. The purpose of the heart, which is the seat of your desires. And the purpose also of your actions that need to be fueled through the Holy Spirit that will give you power to do the things God will call you to do. Uh, let's go over now uh, to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Somebody get out Psalm 119. We talked about this book of Psalms last week and we went over verses 1 through 8 last week but now we're going to jump into verse 9. Now I want you to utilize the learning and the teaching we just had from the book of Ephesians chapter number 4 17 through 19 and we want to apply that logic uh -huh, and apply that learning to what we see here in Psalms 119. Get ready? Let's go. The Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 9 it says wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? We got to deal with that just for a minute. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? And so we're talking about somebody who's looking uh, to be cleansed. We're talking about somebody who's looking where should he go uh -huh, if he wants to do the things of God? Where should he go if he doesn't want to walk in the stench and the filth of the world? Because we're not supposed to love the world nor the things of the world. In fact, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Wherewithal shall he go if he wants to be anointed? Wherewithal shall he go if he wants to be clean? If he wants to be in a position where he is, hallelujah, holy. Where does he go if he wants to be holy? Where does he go, church, if he wants to be cleansed? If he wants to be sanctified? Thank your Holy Spirit. Where shall he go? That's where the Bible uh -huh, comes out. We need to know where to go. Because how many of you know that there's some things you don't have knowledge of where to go when you need them? I know if I need some groceries, I can go to the grocery store. I know if my car needs gas, I can go to the gas station. Yeah, these are real primitive examples. Uh -huh, but how many of you know you learn where to go when you need uh -huh, to have something satisfied? Uh -huh, but the question is here, as far as where shall a young man cleanse his way? Where do I go when I need to be cleansed? I know how to jump in the shower if my body isn't clean on the outside but I need to know where to go when I'm struggling on the inside the Bible says here where should he go by taking heed there too according to your word and so it's God's word that's the cleansing agent we all know this but I want to go deeper because just because you know something don't mean that you're doing it you can have an understanding of something but if your desires haven't changed and your actions haven't changed then how many of you know you're not benefiting from your understanding of the word of God. But today we're going to concentrate on, uh -huh, on going to the gap. Meaning we're going to be going and addressing the gap. What is the gap you mean, Pastor Tracy? The gap is uh -huh, the gap between what we know to do and what we are doing. Sometimes there's a gap. Now if you're perfect in your walk, then this message ain't for you. This message ain't for no perfect people. But it's for people that are broken like me. It's for people that struggle like me. It's for people that need that reinforcement. It's for people that need that strength. Am I talking to somebody who needs a little bit of strength? Am I talking to somebody that still has some bad habits, still has some things that they're working on? I ain't talking to nobody who's already arrived. You've already finished your race. But I know that ain't true because I know that the race isn't given to the swift. I gotta work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. But I need to know where to go get cleansed. Can I only come inside the church building? to get cleansed? Well, we know that ain't true because a lot of churches are closed like this one. But I know if I go to his word, his word is going to cleanse me. Jesus said, my words, they are spirits and my words are life. And so if I subject myself to this word of God, I know I can be cleansed. Yeah, we take a shower or a bath or wash up every day. But how many days a week are you cleansing yourself through the very word of God? I'm not talking about just the word that you do know. 
I'm talking about some words that you don't know. But if you don't pick up your Bible, how can you know what the word is? I want to challenge somebody to pick up their Bible more than they used to pick it up before. The Bible says, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. It says, with my whole heart, in verse 10, have I sought thee. Hallelujah. Oh, let not me wander from thy commandments. He's saying, I'm seeking you with everything I got, God. That's the requirement. Hallelujah. To be in Christ Jesus. We got to go to God with everything we got. I mean, if you know when you really want to do something, you don't allow anything to get in your way. And if an obstacle comes, but you're still trying to get to where you're trying to get to, I mean, if you know you'll overcome the obstacle, uh huh. when you want to get something, if something stains in your way, you're going to move it out the way, or maybe you'll hurdle it, or maybe you'll tunnel under it, or maybe you'll go around it, or maybe you'll go over it. But how many of you know if it's something you want, you're not going to let nothing stand in your way. If your child was in trouble, you're not going to let nothing stand in between you trying to help your child. You're going to go and rescue your child. How many of you know that the word of God, thank you, Lord, is a great rescue? Uh -huh, it's like a lasso that God said that he can throw the lifeline out to you, that you can grab a hold and you won't sink if you're in troubled waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that SOS call when God will save your soul, when he'll throw out that life raft, when he'll throw it out to you, where you can catch hold of it through understanding and you can say, God, I'm going to hold on and I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And so the Bible says here, this young man wants to know how to cleanse his way through the word, but you got to go after God with everything you got. I think we got too many impediments in life. Uh-huh. I think we got too many distractions in life. Uh-huh. I think we got too many forces that are working against us to go towards the things of God. But I know that even though we got all these enemies around us, uh-huh, I know that God can deliver us. I know that God can carry us. I know that God can give us sufficient strength that we might be able to do the very works of God. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. And so the Bible says here, I'm going to love him with everything. But wait a minute. We talked about it over the last couple of weeks. Love the Lord thy God with what? All the heart, all the mind, all your body, all your soul, all your strength. Everything got to go after God. But wait a minute. We talked about God with our understanding. And so if the mind is understanding, then we know we got to have our whole mind enveloped in the spirit of God. The heart is something we're supposed to go after with God. And that means the heart is our desires so all our desires should be changed from being what we want to do to be what God would want us to do I know this ain't popular but I got to preach it hallelujah but the Bible says don't let me wander from that commandments because how many of you know when God is not your focus when God is not the apex when God is not the utopia when God is not the very object that you're going after uh-huh the world situations problems trials tribulations troubles can all distract you and cause you to wander away from your goal I'm here to get everybody back on course hallelujah if you had a GPS thank you Lord your global positioning system no matter where you are uh, the GPS knows where you're at because it's looking at you through a satellite through longitude and through latitude and it knows where you're at you can plug in an address and know where you're going but I believe in Christ Jesus that God knows where everybody is at. He sees you. He sits high and looks low and knows everything you're taking part in. He knows where you were last night. He knows where you're at right now. Uh huh. Instead of global positioning system, I know that God can give you the place where you can be who he wants you to be. And so what I'm saying is, if you're wandering to the left or to right, understand that God got you. And if God got you, he's more than he can can be against you and some of us need to just allow God to reorder our steps so many times with the GPS I wouldn't turn it on because I knew in my mind I already knew the way but sometimes the GPS will give you a route that's more efficient I feel Jesus in here what I'm saying church is this allow God to order your steps allow God to navigate your life he'll get you to heaven
happen. That's the goal. He'll get you to the streets paved with gold. That's the goal. He'll get you in a place where you can shed this old body and get a body that's resurrected by him. That's the goal. He'll get you to the place where there'll be no more pain, where there'll be no more suffering, no more shame, no more guilt. Hallelujah. Let him navigate your life. Now we're starting to preach. And so the Bible says here, uh, Lord, don't let me wander from your commandments. That means I need to be up underneath the word. If I get from up underneath the word, hallelujah, I'm not going to be safe. Think of somebody when it's torrential, rain down or rain pour. It's raining and storming everywhere. But you got your umbrella. If you got a good golf umbrella, hallelujah, I'm thinking about Marcus Stewart because he's a great golfer. But if you have a golf umbrella, a golf umbrella is a little bit more sturdy. A golf, a golf umbrella is a little bit wider. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit stronger. And when you're walking under that golf umbrella, it can be raining down. But the rain won't get to you. But if I step outside of the covering of the umbrella, I'm going to get wet. God says, if you stay up underneath my word, you won't fall. If you stay up underneath your word, you can do his will. If you stay up underneath the word, uh, your way is going to be mapped out by God. But oftentimes, through wicked desires, God is telling us to go left, but we'll go right because our desires ain't right. Because we need to have more understanding in him that our actions might be conformed to his ways. I feel like preaching. And so God, keep us. I'm praying for God to keep us during this COVID season, for God to keep us through this election season, for God to keep us through this all-time high of, of folks losing their jobs and unemployment, that God would keep us. Fires is burning up homes, that God would keep us. Flooding is happening through hurricanes and storms. We need God to keep us. And so for him to keep us, he's provided his word. And his word is the thing that will cover us. His word is the thing that will protect us. We got to hide in his word, church. Let's keep going. In verse 11, it says, Thy word have I what I hid, where in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. I got to take his word. And when I understand his word, it's hidden in my heart. We know from Matthew 13, it's deposited in the heart. We know from talking today that the heart is the seat of your desire. And so if I'm struggling like I am, but I got God's word hidden in my heart when my old wicked desires might be next to God's word. But if I hold on to God's word, I can fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. I want to talk to somebody. You don't feel successful. I want to talk to somebody. You may feel defeated. But if God's word is resonating in your heart, if it's deposited in your heart, you can fight the good fight of faith. You can be a winner. You can be victorious. You can be triumphant. Am I talking to you? What's in your heart? Because what proceeds out of the heart are lies and murders and adulteries. All those things precipitate from the heart because I told you it's the seat of your desires. But if you start to fill your heart with God's word, put more word in to force the old way out. Put more word in to saturate your heart. The Bible says in the Old Testament that the heart is like stone. It's not really fleshy, but it's like stone. But we want it to be fleshy. We want it to be conducive. Think about your normal heart. A hardened heart can't pump blood where it needs to go, but it needs to be real pliable. It needs to go in and out. Let that word of God go in and out. Stick it on in and make sure it gets flushed to every part of your body, every organ. What am I talking about? Let the word come in that it might have an impact on every part of your life. What am I talking about? Just like veins and arteries. Arteries taken to veins bringing from different organs to keep them alive. How many of you know if you want your relationship area to be alive, submit it to the word of God. If you want your work life to be successful, submit it to the ways of God. If you want your children to be successful, submit it to the things of God. Submit it to his word. Just like the heart pumps blood to all the necessary areas with oxygen to keep the organs alive. You need God's word to keep you alive. I need the word 
through the Holy Ghost to keep every single organ alive in my body, to keep every single organ alive in my life, no matter where I'm struggling. If there's sufficient blood, the blood of Jesus, if my heart is right, everything will be all right. But how many of you know that the heart is deceitfully wicked? Yes, it is. It's wicked by nature. Thank Brother Adam for that. We got a messed up heart, but we need God to change our heart. That's why God will oftentimes let you break your heart because when your heart is broken, it needs to be fixed. But I know somebody that can fix your broken heart. That is Christ Jesus. Let him come on in. Let him dwell in your heart. He'll bring his word with him because he is the word and the word was with God and the word was God. There was nothing that was made that wasn't made by him. Am I talking to somebody? He needs to richly dwell in your heart. So even when you mess up, even when you flee, even when you slip up, you might be like David. But David was a man that was after God's heart. That means he wanted to have desires he had. That means he wanted to understand and follow the Lord. It's the same thing with us. I feel like preaching. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says here, I've hid that word in my heart. I hide things I want. I hide things of value. If you had something that you really wanted, that you really needed, and you got a hold of it, and you don't want nobody to steal it from you, you're going to put it in a secret place. That's what you're going to do. But how many of you know when you got the word of God hearted in your heart, that's a good place to put it, that you won't sin against God. He said, blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Ain't that what he said? His statutes are his laws. He said, Lord, I need you to teach me because if you teach me, and God is a good teacher, if I sit my behind down and I listen, hallelujah, how many of you know when you're in school, you don't want to sit in the back. You might miss some things, but if you're in the front row, you can hear what the teacher is trying to say. I want to talk to somebody that God got your full attention. I want to talk to somebody who knows they need to hear the information coming from God's mouth because man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceeded from the mouth of God I gotta hear from God today I need a word and if I hear from God and I understand the word my mind is fruitful and if my mind is fruitful it can work on my desires and when my desires change it can work on my ways through the power of the Holy Ghost teach me your statutes Lord God be the teacher but in order to be the teacher you gotta be uh -huh, where you need to be. God is always where he's supposed to be but where are you? Because in order to go to the classroom, you got to wake up. I feel Jesus in here. In order to go to the classroom, you got to be present. That's why uh, in natural school, they take attendance. They want to know who showed up. I feel Jesus in here. Are you showing up when the teacher is going to teach? How many of you know in the natural, if you had a class at 8 o'clock, that minute started at 8, not 8.15 not 8 30 but 8 o'clock why is that important because the teacher's not gonna move his hours for you but he's gonna have class at a certain time I believe God has a certain time for each and every one of us that he wants to meet with us that he wants to talk with us that he wants to teach us but if we don't never go from class how are we gonna pass I feel Jesus in here how much time are you spending with the teacher how much time are you spending with the master if you don't spend no time. I'm not saying you won't be smart, but you'll always have to rely on what you learned before. Now, what you learned before is good, but God wants to teach you some more things. God wants to fortify the things that you have. God wants to reinforce and to get you strong that you can become a teacher yourself. It ought to be time, church of the most high God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that we get off the milk of the word and start getting into the meat of the word. The milk of the word is repentance from old dead works but we got some deeper things to go in and we need some spiritual maturity God teach me your laws and so the Bible says, blessed art thou, God, teach me thy statutes. He said, God, you're blessed. God, you're awesome. He said, with my lips have I declared all judgments of my mouth, of thy mouth. He said, he's starting to regurgitate. He's starting to say back what God has said to him. We got to be in a position, church, of the most high God, where we can repeat back what God is saying to us. I'll never forget going to Sunday school back when I was little. They gave us little 
flashcards. Uh huh. They'd have a picture on the front. They'd have a scripture on the front, and then they'd have an exposition of what was going on on the back. But we then had memory verses. Am I talking to somebody who had memory verses? I remember Jennifer's late grandma. God rest her soul. Hallelujah. But grandma used to have cards made with scriptures on them, and she would memorize scriptures. I ain't talking about doing it just when you was a kid. She had scriptures on cards when she was an adult. I feel like preaching. If I can go and get a certification for something in my job when I'm 54, how much more should I learn the word of God? We need flashcards. If that's how you learn, you need to sit in more church. If that's what you need, you need to go online and do some research. If that's what you need, what am I telling you? We got to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. We got to rightly divide the word of truth. Am I talking to somebody? The teacher is here. That's Christ Jesus. He's the great teacher. Are you learning from the teacher? Are you sitting down in class? Or sometimes you come to class and are you the child that comes to class and playing on your phone? Uh-huh. Did you come to class? Somebody right now might be playing on their phone. Somebody right now might be distracted. Somebody right now, I remember how we used to do and when I was in class, we had the old school desk, the desk where you can open up. Am I talking to somebody? Commercial break, that's what it is. I had an old school desk that you could open it up. That's where we kept our books and all that types of stuff. Uh-huh. And how many of you know, not only did it have books, we could put our pencils and pens in there as well. Am I talking to somebody? But guess what? Since it could hold things, and when the desk was closed, you couldn't see the contents of the desk. It wasn't clear on the outside. It was all solid. So everything I had in my desk, nobody could know or see but me. I feel Jesus in here. And so not only would books and pencils and pens be in there, but it ain't nothing like having a bag of Doritos in there. Am I talking to somebody? It ain't nothing like having a pack of bubble yum or bubblelicious up in there. Am I talking to somebody? And how many of you know in class, if you don't sit in the front, I remember some days I creak open that desk, act like I'm paying attention to the teacher, sneak me out some gum. Ain't nothing like grape, bubble yum. Mm -hmm. Sneak me out some chips. Ain't nothing like eating Doritos. Commercial break within a commercial break. Ain't nothing like the bag of Doritos at the bottom. Oh my God, where well, all that cheesy sauce is, you lick it off your fingers. We was doing all those things right in class, not paying attention. My God, my God, I wonder if there's anybody who finds it difficult when the teacher is teaching, when the Lord is showing you something that you get easily distracted. Back then, I was easily distracted, but one thing I knew is if I didn't get good grades, I would suffer punishment. How many of you know that if we don't do what we're supposed to do in the time frame that we're supposed to do it, God is the judge. God is the ruler. God is a righteous judge. He'll bring these situations in front of your mind when you had the opportunity to read. Did you read? When you had the opportunity to pray, did you pray? When you had the opportunity to hear the word of God, were you fidgeting? Were you playing around? Sometimes we talk to our neighbor, to the left or to the right or behind us. I never forget in geography class. Uh huh. I remember the teacher put a map between me and brother Carl. Uh, you don't know him, so it's okay. Uh, maybe some of y'all do. But me and Carl had a map in between us because Carl kept turning around talking to me. But I was to blame too. I was talking back to him. I was not paying attention. And so the teacher put a map between us. You know those old maps, those big old maps that are on rollers. It was a disgrace. Everybody laughed at us in class. He made an example out of us. How many of you know that we don't want God to make an example out of us when we're not paying attention? But I thank God for that teacher. I hated him back then, but I love him right now because when I recall, it stopped me from yapping. When I recall, it got back my focus. When I was recall, I think about the guilt. I think about the shame, but I also think about the learning. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you'll learn obedience through the things you suffer? That's the word of God. I feel like preaching. I learned how to pay attention in the name of Jesus. I learned not to talk to my neighbor in the name of Jesus. you got to learn on this Christian walk. Sometimes you got to ignore. Uh -huh. Excuse me. I'm trying to hear the word of God. Excuse me. I'm trying to get a word of God. Excuse me. But I'm on a road. I'm on a road because I'm my mind is messed up. I'm on the road. I need some understanding.
thinking, I'm on the road, my mind ain't right. I'm on the road, my mind needs to be renewed. I'm on the road, my heart needs fixing. I'm on the road, he needs to change my desires. I'm on the road, I need to change my ways. Excuse me, I'll talk to you later. But right now, I need a blessing. Right now, I need a word from God. Right now, I need some healing in this body. Right now, I'm suffering from a broken heart. Where are you at in the continuum? No matter where you're at, God will meet you where you're at. Sit down and let the teacher teach. You got questions. Wait till the end. You got questions. Ask for office hours. God is available 24-7. If you don't understand the teaching, go to God in prayer. Get on your knees. Get on your face. Ask the Father. And when you ask him, shut up. Let the Father speak. Shut up. Meditate on your question. Shut up. Open up your ears that God can give you what you need. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says, with my lips I've declared all the judgments of my mouth, of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. I'm rejoicing, God, as much as in all riches. When you love God more than money, you're on the right track. The Bible says here, I will meditate in thy precepts. What's precepts? That's the principles. I'm going to meditate on the principles. Hallelujah. I'm going to meditate on thy principles or thy precepts. And I'm going to have respect, Lord, unto your way. Last verse says, I will delight myself in the statutes. I will not forget thy word. Do not forget his word. His word you can stand on. His word you can meditate on. His word can deliver you. His word can comfort you. His word is everything you need. You ever see a robin, the female robin will go out and hunt, go and get worms, Take the worms. Eat up the worms. Worms are on the inside of her. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go back to the nest. Regurgitate the words or the worm. And now feed the babies that they could grow strong. Jesus did exactly that. He came down from divinity. Walked around with humanity. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He only spoke what the father told him to speak. So the father would tell him, baby bird, getting the food or the nutrients. And so the Lord would give him the word. And then he would regurgitate the word unto the disciples. He said he had to go away. But he said, greater works, disciples, you're going to do because I'm going to the father. So that meant, wait a minute. When he went up, the Holy Spirit would come down to bring things to their remembrance. The Holy Spirit was a testifier of Christ. So the Holy Ghost only spoke what Christ said and what Christ did. <laughs> and Christ only spoke what his father told him. And so be like that Robin. Eat the word of God. Eat the word of God. Let the word of God resonate in your spirit. Let it give you everything you need. And then regurgitate the word. That means be able to spit it back out and be able to feed somebody else. That's how you share it. Any pregnant woman, what you ate, Went through your baby in the womb. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's the same thing now. You got to watch what you eat. All food ain't good. And if you eat something that's not good for you, it's not going to only impact you. But if you're carrying child, it's going to impact your children. Men of the most high God, we got to watch what we take in through the eye gate, through the ear gate. We're supposed to wash our wife. How can we wash our wife if we're not clean? We're accountable to the family and to God. To give them the things of God. I know it's a different message. We're about to end. But we've got to change our mind. And the way mind is changed by spending more time in God. Make a commitment to yourself. Between you and God that you're going to spend a little bit more time in him. Most of us have learned how to hit the God button, how to get in God to ask him for forgiveness of sins, how to get in God to get a word that we need, how to get in God to feel better about our situation. 
but then we click the button off and we go about doing what we want to do, meaning we go about our own desires. God wants you 24-7, just like the psalmist said. I got to want him with my whole heart. That means with everything. That means, hallelujah, you could go to work with God on your mind. You could take care of your children with God on your mind. You can spend time with your spouse with God on your mind. You can drive in the car by yourself going from A to B to C to D to E with God on your mind. Keep them on your mind because then your mind can change. And if your mind changes, then your desires can change. So then when we say that the Lord will give you the desires of your heart in verse 37, when your mind is saturated with the things of God, now my desires change to his desires, and if my desires are his desires, when I speak his word, which is his will, it will come to pass because then God is using me as a vessel for his will to be done. I feel him. And then my actions have been changed, and then God can say, well done, my good and faithful servant, because our ways are not like his ways apart from Christ. But if we do what Christ tells us to do, now our ways are synonymous with his ways because our way is his way. And his way, his word goes out. It will not return void. You see how it works? We have to do the things of God if we want God the results. God bless you and God keep you. Keep the willpower. Keep the power. Hallelujah. It's altar call right now. We're going to have a general altar call here, and then we're going to have formal altar call. If there's anybody here, hallelujah. If there's anybody here who feels God knocking on your heart, all you have to do is say a prayer like this. Say, Father God, come into my heart. Come into my life, Lord. I'm a sinner, Lord. I've messed up. I need to repent, Lord. Lord, I've been in your classroom, Lord, but I've sat in the back. I've been in your classroom, Lord, but I didn't pay attention. Lord, I didn't show up to class. Lord, I ain't been to class in months, Lord. And Father God, I need a revival. Father God, save me, heal me, deliver me. I believe your word, Father God, and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said anything like that from your mouth, hallelujah, which connected to your heart, meaning that you want to change your desires of your heart, that's why out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Sometimes we've got to go through some things. So our heart was full of junk, and then we've got to hate that junk. So our desire will not be for the junk anymore, but our desire will be from God. I want to talk to somebody who has failed relationships, somebody who's failed in their regular life. And I want to tell you, hallelujah, when you get sick and tired of failing, when your heart is full of failures, and you're tired of it, and you're looking for another way, then you'll change your desire. you say, I need a different way. And how many of you know that God will come to your mind and give you an understanding of who he is and what position and what player he should be in your life, which is the head of your life? Now your desires can change. Now you can be healed. Now you can produce good actions. It's time, hallelujah, for us to take communion. Don't give everybody a second to have communion. It's first Sunday. I know we handed out some communions, but if you don't have the standard communion, go get yourself a piece of bread. Hallelujah. You ain't got a toast. Just break off a piece of bread. Take a little cracker, whatever you make it. Go run and get it right now and get you something to drink. Maybe it's some juice. Maybe it's hallelujah, some water, whatever. But we're going to have communion right now because this is the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Separate your elements. The Bible declares on the very same night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed. On that night, he took bread. And after giving thanks for it, thank you, Father. It was the same night in which the Lord Jesus was betrayed. He said, take, eat of my body, which has been broken for you. Let us all eat together. After the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is the New Testament, which is in my blood. Let us all drink together. And as often as you eat of the bread, which represents the body of Christ, and you drink of the blood, which represents the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of sins. And often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. I know it was a different type of message. 
but we got to work on our mind. That's a life sentence for us to work on our mind, to get it renewed to the things of God, get an understanding of God's word. If you find your desires are not in line with God, then we got to work on the mind so that we can have an understanding of his word and put more word in that our heart might be full of his word. And then and only then, I believe, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be victorious with our actions. God bless you and God keep you. We're going to ask Lady J to come on up. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, oh Father God. And we thank you, Father God, and we praise you. We lift you high and we give you glory. Father God, we want to confess, oh Father God, that we need more willpower, Father God. Father, give us the power, Lord, to restrain all those impulses. Give us the power, Father God, to walk in the newness of life, life Lord that the old man might stay dead, Lord, and he may not resurrect, Lord. But Father God, you said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We want to walk in the newness of life. And Father, we pray, oh Lord, that you would give us the understanding of the mind. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would deal with the contents of our heart, Lord, that our desires, Father God, might be only towards you, Lord. And Father God, give us the power through the Holy Spirit, Lord, that our actions Actions might line up with your word, with your will, with your way. Continue to order our steps. Father God, I sense, oh Lord, somebody, Lord, that needs to renew their vows in you. Somebody that needs, hallelujah, to give their life anew to you, Father. And I pray, Father God, that they will come, Lord, to the altar, Lord. That they won't go another day, Lord, without fixing the relationship and the gap, Lord, that's between you and them. And we know that gap is only fulfilled through the blood of Jesus. So send them, Father God, to the prayer line. Send them, Father God, to the altar, Lord. And we give you all praise and honor and glory and for those, O oh Lord, who are fully furnished, Lord, and full of your word and your spirit. Send them out, Father God, that they might be anointed husbands, anointed wives, anointed children, anointed co-workers and workers, Lord, and owners, Father God. Send them out, O oh Father God, that everywhere they go, Father God, their light might shine, Lord that the light of you would shine through them, that men and women and boys and girls might see that light, Lord, and give glory to you in heaven. We thank you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. And Lord, since you give us an extra hour, Father God, let somebody sow some of that time back unto you, Lord, praying, studying, reading, worshiping, and praising. We thank you, we praise you, and we call it done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. All right, we love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. God bless you. God bless. God bless.